the most important question of all is, what is God's will about women and the priesthood? When I read the scriptures, I find six spiritually compelling doctrines in Mormonism that support the ordination of women. One, all are alike unto God. Two, we have both a heavenly father and a mother who we can be like someday. Three, we are co-eternal with them. Four, priesthood is necessary to eternal progression. Five, we have moral agency. And six, God continues to reveal new light and knowledge. I've created this scripture study chart for all six of these Mormon doctrines. Let's dig in. Doctrine 1. All are alike unto God. The Book of Mormon states in 2 Nephi 26.33, Black and white, bond and free, male and female, all are alike unto God. This is the Church's official teaching. In Galatians 3, 26 and 27, we read, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither male nor female, for ye are one in Christ Jesus. We share many characteristics, particularly as we strive to emulate Christ. Compassion, love, empathy, spirituality. However, as individual women and men, we have different talents, gifts, and abilities. DNC 46 states, For all have not every gift given unto them, for there are many gifts, and to every man and woman is given a gift by the Spirit of God. Clearly, equality isn't about sameness or erasing differences between men and women or among individuals. It's about removing barriers to access, opportunity, agency, and spiritual authority. Each of us, according to our individual gifts and experience, can bring unique insights and perspectives to church callings, service, councils, and administration. Impediments to service and spiritual authority, such as a male-only priesthood, thwart our ability to use our gifts fully, particularly if they don't fit neatly into traditional gendered categories, and they deny everyone the fruits of those gifts. As former General Relief Society President Elaine Jack once told Elder Ballard, You know, Elder Ballard, the women of the church may have some good suggestions if they are asked. Doctrine 2. We have both a father and mother in heaven, and we are heirs to all they have. The Encyclopedia of Mormonism asserts that Mormonism, quote, accepts literally the vital scriptural teaching as worded by Paul, quote, The Spirit itself beareth witness unto our spirit that we are children of God, This and other scriptures underscore not only the spiritual sibling relationship, but heirship with God, and a destiny of joint heirship with Christ. Further, the entry continues, As early as 1839, the prophet Joseph Smith taught the concept of an eternal mother, as well as an eternal father. Today, the belief in a living mother in heaven is implicit in Latter-day Saint thought. Though the scriptures contain only hints, statements from presidents of the church over the years indicate that human beings have a heavenly mother as well as a heavenly father. Close quote. So they not only share parenthood, but are alike in glory, perfection, compassion, wisdom, and holiness. An empowered heavenly mother appears to be consistent with one of Mormonism's most compelling teachings, namely the belief in a God who wants to share power and spiritual authority with us. Essential to the LDS concept of God is that men and women see themselves in their image and understand that we can aspire and progress to be like them, men and women fully endowed with their power, glory, perfection, compassion, wisdom, and holiness. Women are often wary of power because it can be wielded coercively and abusively, and Mormon scriptures rightly warn about its ability to corrupt in DNC 121. Quote, we have learned by sad experience that it is the nature and disposition of almost all men, as soon as they get a little authority, as they suppose, they will immediately begin to exercise unrighteous dominion. However, exercising power is preferable to powerlessness, because having priesthood power enables us to do tremendous good, particularly if it's used righteously, as modeled by Christ, not to coerce, but, in President Linda Burton's words, Quote, to bless, lift, comfort, strengthen, and empower others. Close quote. The LDS doctrine of deity in section 121 of priesthood teaches us that only power used to empower others is everlasting. Unlike 12 year old boys in the church, women have not been taught to aspire to priesthood authority or tutored in the use of priesthood power. As Elder Oak stated, 
Quote, we are not accustomed to speaking of women having the authority of the priesthood. Close quote. However, as a church, we are beginning to envision women exercising the power and the authority of the priesthood. The big question for me is, if women appropriately exercise priesthood power and authority today, why not priesthood keys and office? Especially given LDS doctrine number three, which is, priesthood is necessary to eternal progression. <laughs> 